I'm Richard Woodward and this is my list of top 10 Premier League wins for Ipswich Town in the 90s. April 1992 and a draw away at Oxford is enough to crown John Lyle's Ipswich Town champions of the then Division 2. In a rare instance of timing being on the club side for once, the Blues would find themselves members of the inaugural Premier League, an acrimonious but hugely lucrative parting of the ways between the professional football league pyramid and the big money clubs. With the support of a burgeoning satellite broadcaster willing to splash the cash to secure broadcasting rights, a glossy new top flight came to life in August 1992. Ipswich began their season at a fully seated Portman Road at home to Aston Villa. Let me take you back in time before global pandemics when ITFC, for a time, held their own against the top teams in the country. Number one. Ipswich 4, Leeds 2. This game was all about veteran oh, yeah. defender John Ward in his third spell at the club, but it was a Yorkshireman, Chris Kiwomia, who would give Town an early lead. Taken by Thompson, converted by Kiwomia from very close range. Walk would have the Blues 3-0 up by half-time against the reigning top-tier champions with two set pieces. This free kick... He couldn't see it! Well, if he did, it was too late. John Walker's made it 2-0. Leeds lose another goal of the set piece. Two minutes left in the first half. And then a penalty to stun the visitors, who had struggled to reassert themselves after such a successful previous campaign. Goals from Lee Chapman and Gary Speed in the second half were caused for only temporary concern for the home fans. Walk swept in a teasing cross headed in by Jason Dizel. This is one of only two instances of the Blues scoring four goals in this first three-year spell in the Premier League. Number two, Norwich nil, Ipswich two. A repeat of the same scoreline from the last league Stanley derby at Carroll Road, and Chris Kiwomia yet again does the damage from a set piece. On this occasion, Neil Thompson is the provider and the town left-back is on hand to dispatch a late chance to give the Blues fans the local bragging rights. The Canaries were top of the league at Christmas, though this was the second defeat in a row for the Norfolk side, who would stutter during the second half of the campaign, but still go on to finish in third. Number three, Ipswich two, Blackburn one after Kenny Dalglish's Blackburn took a second-half lead via Roy Wegerly, Boncho Gwentchev would establish cult status with an instinctive bicycle kick to bring the home side level. Acrobatic from Boncho Gwentchev! Chris Kiwomia would score yet again, this time a late winner to complete the town comeback. Mims has come, he got a fist with Mazzell, Kiwomia! Town would end their first half of the 92-93 season in fifth place, having only suffered two defeats along the way. Number four, Ipswich two, Manchester United one. United, mind you, had suffered four defeats by the time they turned up at Paul Road. Town had nabbed a point at Old Trafford early in the season, and Kiwomia got the Blues off to the best possible start after a gift from keeper Peter Schmeichel. Frank Yellop made it two goals in two matches, having previously gone four years without a town goal, with another cracking effort. United a bit thin on the ground in defence. Deflected shot and in. Frank Yellop. Brian McClare netted a late consolation for United, but Town held on to their 10th win of the season and would go into February fourth in the league table. Number five. Oldham nil, Ipswich 3. At the start of the 93-94 season, reinforcements were needed, and five days before the start of the season, Ian Marshall joined from Oldham Athletic. The stage was then set for the Scouser to open the scoring in the opening game against his old club, and this was followed up by a pile driver by Steve Palmer 
moments later. There's Marshall. Put it connect. Oh, it's two. This time it's Palmer. Oh, that's an absolutely cracking goal. Pointed now by Mason, who's made a terrific forward run. Another Scout Summer signing, Paul Mason, made it three, and that would be the largest winning margin that Town managed to achieve in their first three-year spell in the Premier League. Number six, Ipswich two, Norwich one. More Christmas joy against the old enemy, and neither side had really managed to start the 93-94 campaign as well as they'd done the previous season. Town took the lead via a John Walk penalty after only eight minutes. Mark Bowen equalised before half time, and the game appeared to be going to stalemate until the very last moment when Norwich defender Gary Megson rose highest to head a town corner past keeper Brian Gunn and send the town fans into delirium. Number seven, Ipswich three, Sheffield United two. A high scoring game this, but more memorable for the conditions. Again, Town were dominant on the set pieces. David Linnigan gave the Blues an early lead. Thompson's got to come in, it's another easy. Before Marshall made it two, before 10 minutes had even been played. Astonishing stuff. Ian Marshall will claim that. Stuart Slater, another £750,000 signing, put Town in a commanding position after Alan Cork had brought the Blades back into the match. And as the snow started to accumulate around Portman Road, the Blues froze and let the Blades get one more goal to make the final score 3-2. Number eight, Ipswich three, Manchester United two. We're in the 94-95 season now, and a second home victory over United from this list. The Reds had won the first two Premier League titles, and they would eventually go on to miss out on the third by one point to Dalglish's Blackburn. So you never know the impact of a defeat until you get to the end of the season. Town went into this game third from bottom, but belied their lowly league status by taking a two-goal lead into half-time. Paul Mason netting twice. Before Cantona and Paul Scholes brought United level. Record signing at the time, Steve Sedgley had the final say though giving the Blues only their second win of the season and taking the Blues five places up the table, albeit temporarily. Fergie and United would get merciless revenge for this defeat later on in the season in March. Number nine, Ipswich four, Leicester one. George Burley had only recently been appointed following Mick McGiven and John Lyle's departure. Burley's side gave town fans perhaps a false sense of hope with this 4-1 win over Leicester. Soon to depart, Chris Kiwambia bagged a brace and Adam Tanner, making his debut, lashed in a long-range second goal to ease the doubts after Ewan Roberts had equalised. Kiwami is second, and a header by Yalak gave Town their highest scoring win, equaling that three goal winning margin from the game against Oldham. The Foxes would struggle in a similar fashion to the Blues. Their spell in the top flight would also end with relegation. Number 10, Liverpool nil, Ipswich 1. After impressing against Leicester, Adam Tanner retained his place in the town lineup, and he repaid town boss George Burley with this wonderful strike. It was town's first league win at Anfield, going back to 1954. Sadly though, this win was a rare highlight in a season where town would only earn eight more points after this victory. They were relegated after three years in the top flight, and it would be five seasons until a glorious albeit short-lived return. So that's my list. Did I miss out any important victories to you? Leave me a note in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.